Hi, welcome back to another one of our Gable Hall School Science Practical Help videos. Um, this is for the P2 physics paper and it's part of the waves topic. Um, it's not a piece of equipment we have out very often, but it's a piece that does enable us to try and look at or study waves. Now, many of the waves that we have to look at in science are difficult to observe because they're invisible. With water waves, clearly, you can see what's happening. I'm going to show you quickly with this piece. It's called a ripple tank. It enables us to have a look at what happens when waves propagate from an object. In this case, I've got a little bar in the water. And if I tap on those, you can see the waves traveling across the paper. I'll do it one more time. So I tap it across and the wave. And actually, you can also see some of the waves reflecting back. So the practical that they ask you to do here is to consider or help prove what we call the wave equation. Now I'm going to draw the wave equation for you here. It's definitely one you have to learn. It will almost definitely come up in the exam. And it is that wave speed, velocity, equals frequency times wavelength. And wavelength's got that strange Greek symbol called lambda. So if you have a look, what we often do obviously is put this into a triangle. You've done this many times before, but let's just double check. We've got it in the triangle the right way around. So because we've got frequency times wavelength at the bottom, we've got frequency times wavelength in there, and velocity on the top. The point of this experiment is to try and show you what happens since the speed of water or the speed of the wave inside the water is controlled by the depth of the water. I'm going to keep that the same, so hopefully my wave speed stays the same. What I'm going to do is try and change the frequency. So I'm going to put a little motor on here and when the motor spins it makes my little bar vibrate up and down. So rather than just getting one wave that you saw just now, I've now got lots of them. And you can see clearly on the paper here that the waves are traveling from the bar across the paper. And if you have a look closely on there, I can see the actual size of the waves on there. You can see the width of them. Okay, so I could mark on roughly where the widths of those waves are. Now, if you remember from before, if I try to draw what a wave looks like, put it on the diagram just here. So I've got my wave. If I was to look closely at it, I've got peaks of waves and troughs of the waves as the water goes up and down, just like all the other waves. And of course, as they go across, they transfer an energy. And what I can see there with my little light spots on the paper is the gap between two peaks, which we call a wavelength. So now what I'm gonna try and do, I'm gonna try and increase the speed at which the motor spinning, so the vibration is going to be faster. And as I do that, we should see that if I increase the frequency, the waves get closer together. It makes them a little bit more difficult to see. But I think now if you have a close look there, you can see that the waves are very, very close together. So where they were spread out before, if I was to draw the pattern on again, I've now got the waves very close together. So what I've done, I have taken the frequency and I've doubled it. So this was the original frequency. I've increased the frequency by two and if you have a look at the wavelength, in other words the gap between the waves, where the wavelength was quite big before you can now see the wavelength has shrunk. In fact what happens is if you double the frequency you halve the wavelength, which is exactly what happens in the formula here. So if I double the frequency, I have to halve the wavelength to get the same velocity. And that is the point of this practical. It's quite a simple one. It's just to show or help prove the wave equation that you have to learn for the exam. I hope that helps.